Hello, I'm Stephanie, and sometimes I make art. It's June, and June is my birthday month. This year I turned 30, and uh, this was just last week, which was a really fun day. I took a much-needed break that whole day. I actually did not work. It was great. It was very special. Shout out to my boo for making it very special. It's been interesting to hear some of the comments from people um, about turning 30. Half of them have been really good and the other half have been more like, ooh, how do you feel? Like there's this anticipation of something negative that I should be foreboding, but I think that's just so crazy. Anyway, I, I still feel like a kid. I still feel like the youngest person in the group. I don't know if that's like my family dynamic or whatever, it doesn't matter. And so last night as I was journaling, I was naturally thinking about some of the things that I have learned in the last three decades, and there have been some things specific to art that I feel like have enriched my life up until now. And in no way is this life advice. This is just more like open diary time. But I wanted to share a few things I've learned from art. It's a language for that which does not have words. Now, I know, obviously, many forms of art are literally words. <laughs> But still, it's such a good way to express those things from the inner space that don't have words, especially when you are of the introvert variety of human, where it's just really hard to verbalize sometimes. And it, you really want to share, especially with those that are close, like something that's either bothering you or just some weird specific way that you feel, whether it's good or bad. And, and words are not enough, and like there's... Ah, I, ah, I don't know, I don't know, I'm sorry. Art is there for you for that. I had a therapist years ago who had me like sketch or draw like it felt like kindergarten, it felt silly, but she was just like, nah, I'll just do it. I did a lot of processing with that one that I wouldn't have with any other therapist I've encountered. As I was doing them, to me, I was like, this is so bogus, whatever. I'm like doodling random lines, then we start looking at it, and it was like, oh my god, I just, I made a personalized <laughs> Rorschach scribble. <laughs> Somehow it worked really well, and she really made me realize how much the act of creating something draws out things from your subconscious. So art is a really good tool for saying that which is hard to say. It's a medicine for heartbreak. So related to the last lesson, art is a really good way to process things. I feel like I have been able to vent so much through art that has never seen the light of day. It really does feel like medicine for your soul. In the past, I've also used the creation process just to simply cheer myself up. Sometimes people or like bad habits or maybe just distractions are not the best way to deal with whatever. Um, I have found art to be a really good and productive way and just fulfilling way to cheer myself up and get lost in the process of making something. It's medicine in that it has helped me increase positive energy. Simple as that. It's still really hard work, even when you love it. So getting really deep into the process of a work, a work that you have a plan for, maybe, maybe you don't, just something that you really want to see it to completion, it's so tedious. Or it can be, it doesn't have to be, but oftentimes the work that we feel, you know, serious about completing has a lot of in-the-middle steps that feel so tedious. And even though you're like, oh god, art is my passion, I love this painting, I love this whatever, um, this is going to be my masterpiece. The path to getting there is so tedious. And I guess this goes for anything and that's why it's a lesson from art. But even though you love something, it still takes hard work to complete it. Sometimes, sometimes it's really quick and you're like, wow, I am a genius. But oftentimes it's just a really difficult process and it's tedious and it's hard work and it's gonna kick your ass, but it's still worthwhile, of course. And so just because it feels like work, and then you feel the friction and you procrastinate somewhere in the middle because you don't want to do it, but you do want to do it. It doesn't mean that it's not for you necessarily. It's still going to be hard work. Basically, there's just no getting around that. Maybe you don't want to get around that and you come out a more disciplined person on the other side. So I think it's kind of, you know, good to get your ass kicked by your creation every now and then. 
Spontaneous moments of inspiration are golden. I believe this is regarded as being in flow, some kind of flow state, when you're just going and you're not so in your head and you're more so in your body and the next steps are just happening almost automatically. This is a great time when inspiration comes and so oftentimes the difficulty is like, well, when is it going to come next? <laughs> Especially if you haven't had such a moment in a while, it can be frustrating. I guess the lesson from that is that those moments are gold, they are to be appreciated, they are to be cherished, and also it's worth creating a mind and to an extent a body that is fertile grounds for such spontaneous moments of inspiration, but it's also not just waiting around and that's why you kind of have to do your end and either continuously make, even when you don't feel inspired, or staying lighthearted so that your mind can be more of a fertile ground to receive such golden nuggets of inspiration. And it's so interesting sometimes when those moments come and what works or what events they lead to. I think it's a really valuable part of the human experience and that's why I'm calling it gold. It has helped me balance my masculine energy. So although I am very much an effeminate person, I tend to have a lot of masculine energy. It's very like rigid and logical and plan A, B, and C and this and then that and cause and effect and oftentimes not as fluid as I'd like it to be. The process of making art, I wouldn't say forces me, but has helped me counterbalance all of that rigidness, all of that left-brained and be less in my mind and more in the body and in a flow state and not so much have a plan and kind of just go. Although plenty of the art I have made has been very exact and planned and uh, left-brained. But that's okay too. I like that stuff. The pendulum often swings towards the masculine energy and sometimes I need it to go back and swing the other way. And so art and the process of making art helps me do that when I've been hanging out on this left brain for far too long. Art for the sake of art is a good enough reason for living. Uh, I forget when I kind of thought that I would distill down like, what is my reason for living? As if, you know, as if I like had a plan, like, mm, this is it. This is how I will live. But what I came up with was that my reason for living was to make art and love people. It sounds so flowery. <laughs> I don't like saying it out loud. But I think that still holds up. It's a good enough reason for living. We think, therefore we should art. It's interesting that art is even a thing. It's not a practical thing. But the humans were like, yeah, we need to decorate our, our caves and our spaces and our lives and we need to decorate the sound and our words and, and make these things that are flowing in our brains. So, so we have art. Like why? Do other animals have art? But anyway, yeah, what do I know? I'm just a baby. I don't feel 30. I do feel like a baby. I probably will always feel like, I don't know, I've just got that baby energy. And on that note, I think it's important to keep somewhat of your childlike energy and to stay curious and open and, and mentally flexible and don't let the harshness of the world kill your inner child. Because, I mean, like, life is just more fun that way, you know? And I feel like I'm here to make art and have fun and, and do lovely things, so... Yes. I'm happy to be alive and I hope I get three more decades and beyond. I'm curious about how you feel about aging and your personal milestones and what life has taught you that you feel like sharing. I'd love to know. Bye!